Welcome to 3.3, fractions, decimals, and percents, and we're going to be doing specifically adding and subtracting decimals. Now, this is going to build on your grade 6 skills. We've done a little bit of, a bit of this earlier, so this is kind of like a review. You should have very little difficulty with this. Okay, so what we're going to start with, though, because there's a skill that's going to be coming up needed required, it's going to be required later, um, it's called estimating. We're going to use estimating to check your answers. So, first off, what is estimating? Well, estimating is an educated guess. Now, this educated guess, I guess that's spelled right, um, based on your experience and knowledge. <coughs> There is a way to get an educated guess wrong, and that's to be too far from the true value. So, for example, if I asked you to estimate the distance between here and Edmonton, and you said 6,000 miles, I would tell you that your estimation is wrong. And you basically would have to adjust and then fix it, because you're by grade 7, you should know that it's about a two-hour drive to Edmonton, so you should know it's right around 200 kilometers. Now, if I asked you how far it is from here to uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, you probably wouldn't have a clue where that was. So you couldn't make an estimate on that, uh, on that distance. But when we're doing estimates, estimations of decimals, it's very easy for you to get it right, so none of you should be incorrect. So when you add or subtract decimals, you use estimation to find what the answer should be before actually calculating. Uh, and this can be very useful because it actually helps you to find out whether you did it right. We did this in grade 6. Let's do one um, where we round to the nearest thousands. Now remember, I'm going to go over here and do a quick round to a thousand so you can help. <coughs> round to the nearest thousand. Remember, this is ones, this is tens, this is hundreds, and this is thousands. So I'm going to be cutting off right there on the thousands. And I want to know, is this closer to 3,000 or 4,000? To determine that, you take a look at the number right beside it and figure out whether this is 5 or greater. If this is 5 or greater, that means that you're, you're past the halfway point, which means you're closer to 4,000. If you're 4 or less, you haven't passed the halfway point yet. So what that means is this is stays, close, stays as 3. Well, since it's a 4, this is closer to 3,000. Okay? Now, let's take and see what happens if this was greater. What if this was an 8? Well, 3,878 is almost 4,000. So if you take a look here, you've got an 8 here. This 8 is 5 or greater, so that means this 4 goes up, which means you end up with 4,000. Okay? So 3,878 rounded to the nearest 1,000 is 4,000. <coughs> now, you can also round to other numbers. What if I gave you 3,478 and told you to round to the nearest 100? Well, the 4 is in the hundreds place, so there's your cutoff. Is this 5 or greater? Yes, this one's closer to 3,500. What if I asked you to do 3,478 to the nearest 10? There's your 10, the 7's in the tens place. This 8 is greater than 5, so this becomes 3,480. Okay? When you round to the nearest one, you have to go into the decimals. So 4.32, if I want to round to, say this is 24, I want to round to the nearest ones place, I have to have a decimal there, and I'm going to check the number in the tenths place to find out if it's four or greater, sorry, five or greater. And that will determine whether the five goes up or not. So let's go over here and start working with the decimals that we've been given, all right, or the numbers you've been given. 2,346. 4,677. I want you to round it to the nearest thousand. So I'll give you a second. I want you to pause the recording and round that. Time's up. So this is rounding to the nearest thousand. So that's your cutoff right there. The two is where we're going to cut and change, cut off and change or not. The three is not five or greater. So this is closer to 2,000. The six is going to cause the four to go up. So now we can add those very quickly in our head to get 7,000. So I know that when I add these two numbers, I should get something around 7,000. Now, to add these up, you, in grade 7 or grade 6, depending on what grade, you know, where we had 
safety lines, and, and they don't always work on when I'm using the computer system. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to take them out for now. All right, let's take and just do the adding without safety lines. Six and seven, these two numbers right here, is the first two numbers you add. Six and seven is 13. Put down the three. Now that one is in the tens place, so you're going to move it over and include it in the tens for addition. Next, you're going to add the seven and the four. That's 11. And now include this one. That gives you 12. Put down the two. Carry the one. Now, six and three is nine. And add the one is 10. Put down the zero. Carry the one. Four and two is six. And this one is seven. So the real answer is 7,023. And if you take a look at our estimate of 7,000, that means we're very close. Now, the same principle that we just did is going to be applied in decimals. So when we round decimals, let's do a little quick review here. Okay. When we do tens, let's do that first. I guess I've got a whole bunch of examples here we're going to work with, rounding tens, hundreds, and then the whole number. So let's take a look at this one first. 1268, 1268. We want to round this to the nearest tens place. So you have to identify which one of these numbers, the 1, the 2, the 6, or the 8, is in the tens place, and that is the 6. Okay? So we're going to look at the number in the ones place because our cutoff is right here. Okay? We want to know is it 5 or greater? 8 is greater than 5. So round the 6 up to 7. So your answer is going to be 1, 2, 7, 0. Oh. You'll notice that that's got a 70 in it, and that's in basically with a factor of 10, or a multiple of 10. Now, 102, 343, 102,343, round that to the nearest 10 right now. Okay, your cutoff is right here. The 3 does not change the 4, so you should have 102,340. Now, how does that change when we go to the hundreds place? Not that much. Instead of looking for the tens, we're now looking for the hundreds. Now the four is in the hundreds place. Okay, so we want to look at the five to find out whether or not that five here is going to change this four. So look at the number in the tens place. Is it five or greater? Well, five is equal to five, so it is five or greater. So we want to round the four right here up to a five. So your final answer when you do this is going to be three four, sorry, three, five, oh, oh. Now notice we're in a multiple of 100, so that's 500. So now try the next one. Okay, we're going to be rounding the 100, so you're going to cut off right here. The 7 caused the 4 to become a 5, so you're going to end up with 500. And of course, the 342 sticks around. Now, how does that change when we're working with ones? Well, if you look at ones, we have now got to pull in the tenths for the th ending. Okay, and that's the first decimal place. The four here is in the tenths place. So I want to round 2.456 to the nearest ones place. Notice, notice it's a es ending, so it's not a decimal. I want to have it to the nearest whole number. I need to know, is this going to be a 2 or a 3? Well, look at the 4, because my cutoff is going to be at the whole number. Does the 4 cause the 2 to go up? Now, how do I determine that? Is the 4 5 or greater? So we want to look at the number in the tenths THS place. Is it 5 or greater? And the answer here is no, it's not. So your final answer is going to be not raised up. It's going to just stay as 2. Okay, now for 34.4, here's your cutoff, and I will let you finish that. Do the next two examples. All right, the 4 does not cause this other 4 to go up, so this one stays as 34. The cutoff here, the 7 causes the 5 to go up, so your answer here is 46. Okay, so, so much for rounding. Let's use these skills of rounding to estimate what an answer should be. So I want to calculate the sum of 4.989 plus 23.43. I need to round these two numbers together. Well, the 4.989, we know this is going to be, the 9 causes the 4 to go up, so this is going to be around 5. This 4 
causes this to stay as a 23. So what ends up happening here is I end up with 5 plus 23, which is 28. So this gives me an answer somewhere around 28. So that's where my sum should be. Now, when you add, okay, oh, sorry, I guess it is, which means the sum should be around 28. When you add decimals, there is one critical rule you have to do. You must line up the decimal. If you don't line up the decimal, everything's going to be wrong. Okay, think about it. This is in the tens place here. You're adding two tens to four tens. And if you look at this, this is actually four point. The actual four is actually in the ones place. So it's all messed up. When you add, the, add these up, it's going to actually come out to be totally, completely messed up. So your first thing you need to do is to make sure that your decimals are lined up. So what I would suggest you do is put your first number's decimal in and put your second number's decimal in and just put the numbers in now around these. Now you're going to notice we got some spaces here. There's a space right here and there's a space right here where I have a digit uh, above the, this box and I have a, a box above the 2 here. So above, below the 9, stick a 0 in there because it doesn't change it, and above the 2, stick a 0 there. This allows you to have numbers that you can add up in each column. Okay? Now, once you have that, you just have to add them as if there were whole numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this. I've got 0, 4.989, and I've got 23.430. Notice I space things out so I don't get messed up. Okay, so now you start with the left, the right-hand side. You start with 9 plus 0, and that's a 9. There's nothing to carry, so this just stays as uh, it stays the way it is. 8 plus 3 is 11. Put down the 1. Carry the 1 which you brought over from the tens place. 9 and 4 is gives me 13. Plus this 1 is 14, so put down the 4. Carry the 1. Now, bring the decimal straight down. 3 and 4 is 7, and this 1 is 8. And, of course, 0 and 2 is 2. So my final answer is 28 decimal 419. Since we rounded up top and we found that my answer should be around 28 from, my, from the estimating, you can be confident that you haven't made a huge error. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you didn't make a mistake. I mean, if you made a silly error, you may have had 28.319 or something. I can't help you if you can't add, uh, you know, 9 and, and 4 and, 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 and carry the 1. I mean, if you can't do this, I can't help you. You're going to make mistakes. So make sure you take care as you're adding to carry properly and correctly. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. What's the difference between 2.647 and 1.45? Remember, difference is the result of subtracting. So I'm asking you to subtract. So 2.647... Um, that's a, close to a 3, and 1.45, that's close to a 1, so I've got 3 take away 1, my answer should be around 2, all right, give or take a bit. Now, let's take a look at what we get here. Line up the decimals and subtract, so I'm going to go over here on the right-hand side, I got 2.647 and 1.45, I'm going to add a 0, just so I have something to work with here, remember I'm subtracting this time. 7 take away 0 right here. 7 take away 0 is 7. Now, here's one you have to be careful with. If you have four pencils and you have to remove five, you don't have enough. So you have to go next door and borrow some from this guy. So this guy is going to become a 5, and this is going to become 14. Now that you have 14, you can take away the 5. 14 take away 5 is 9. 5 take away 4 is 1. And, of course, bring your decimal straight down. And 2 take away 1 is 1. Okay? Now, I've got 1.197. I said my answer should be around 2. Um, the reason that it's not around 2 is because both of these are very close to 1. Okay? That's the only reason. If I had rounded to the nearest tenth, it would have come out carefully. See, sometimes even your rounding is a little off. But it will help you not to mess it up too badly. So there's 1.197 is your correct answer. Okay, Danny went shopping at Walmart and bought the following items. A shirt for $25.99, pants for $27.49, shoes for 
diapers for 1950. She gave the clerk $100. How much did she receive in change? So what is the first step in calculating this? You need to find out how much she spent. So your first goal is to find the total. So I'll give you a couple of seconds. I want you to find the total for these numbers. So pause the recording and continue when you have the right answer. Remember, everything must be done totally by hand. You are not allowed to use a calculator. Okay, so wise to add them all in one column. It takes a little bit less time. You could add the first two numbers and then take that and add it to the next one and then take that and add it to the next one. But it's easier to work with four numbers in a column and work your way down. So my first goal is to add 9910, that's 18, so I put down the 8, carry the 1. My next goal is to add these numbers. A 9 and a 4 is 13 and 5 is 18 and the 1 here is 19, so put down the 1. Put your decimal on down, carry the 1 over. And now I'm going to add the next column. I get 9 and 2 is 11, and 7 is 18, and 5 is 23, and 1 is 24. So carry the 2. And then 2 and 2 and 2 is 6, sorry, 2, 2, 2 and 2 is 8, and 1 is 9. So you should have $91, sorry, $94.98. If you did that correctly, everything is going great. So turn the page. Now, how do you calculate her change? Now remember, she gave the clerk $100. So you have to take $100 and you have to subtract what she spent, the cost of what she spent. So I've got $100 and I have to subtract $94.98. Now, when you have $100, remember the decimal is always at the end of a number. It's right here. So this is what $100 looks like as a decimal. Now you can subtract. Now this is a difficult question because you have to do with, I guess it's borrowing five times. Zero take away eight right here cannot be done because I don't have enough take away eight. So I've got to go next door. There's nothing here. So I've got to borrow from this. There's nothing there. So now I've got to borrow from this. There's nothing there. So now I've got to borrow from here. Okay. When I borrow from here, this becomes a zero and this one here becomes 10. Now that I have 10, I can borrow from that 10, it becomes a 9, and I have 10 here. Now that I have 10 here, I can borrow from there, that becomes a 9, and I get 10 here. Now I can borrow from here, that becomes a 9, and I get 10 here. This is a very tricky question. 10 take away 8 is 2. 9 take away 9 is 0. Put your decimal in. 9 take away 4 is 5, and 9 take away 9 is 0. So Dana received $5.00 and two cents changed. Now, when I first made this question up, they still had pennies. So I guess in real life, she'd probably get five dollars and change because there's no such thing as two cents anymore. So complete your assignments. If you have any questions, back up, watch it again, and uh, come and see me for any questions that you have.